drummer and started as a drummer and in church in Canada. I'm, a, I'm from Canada. And, I, and then I had this dream. I grew up on a farm and I had this dream uh, after watching a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie called, uh, called uh, Bloodsport. And I saw Prince's Purple Rain in the same weekend. So I wasn't allowed to watch movies like that. My mom, they, I think they only let me watch like Chariots of Fire. We were very, very uh, protected from, like I grew up in a very strict uh, religious home that we weren't allowed to listen to music that wasn't uh, religious. And so my exposure was very, very limited. So I was incredibly dramatically affected by this movie, Bloodsport, which is Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's a fight movie, but in the movie, uh, or on my on the farm, I would wake up dreaming I was on set acting. Like they would yell "cut," and I'd wake up. And so I put myself in martial arts. I put put myself in uh, acting school and stopped eating sugar because of that movie. And I was 16 years old. And then along the way, when I was in college, I went to college on a volleyball scholarship, and somebody saw me there for modeling and sent me around the world uh, for modeling. And when I was 19. But all along the way, I knew I wanted to act and I was trying to get back to acting. I was doing commercials and going to acting school. I uh, lived in New York uh, where I met Ariane and did a bunch of things along the way. Got my license, learned a bunch of languages, learned to cook uh, and was always studying music and studying acting. And then when my first son was born, we moved to Los Angeles, which is now 19 years ago. For me to start a new career at 30 and if I thought the rejection from modeling was tough, I had, you know, I, it was nothing compared to what I was about to experience in, uh, in the acting world. And so this talk is focused on the art of rejection, which is sort of reframing rejection instead of it being something negative, reframing rejection as one of the biggest gifts and almost like an art. And I'm going to focus just a little bit on that. Um, but first, I just want to invite you to close your eyes. We're going to do a short meditation together. We're going to come together in this room. And if you put your videos on, I would really appreciate it. So I don't, it feels like we're in this together. I won't be staring at you, but, but it just, it feels, it gets you from an observer into playing the game with me here, which like Ariane said, take some notes, be in this, and then it'll stick around and it won't just be, oh, that was a fun talk, right? So close your eyes with me, if you will, if you feel like you want to. <clears throat> and we're just going to do a very short chunk of priming, which is something I learned from <laughs> through Ariane, through Tony Robbins. And you're being primed by the news. You're being primed by the music. Primed. I used to spray this stuff on the tractor to prime the engine to start it, right? Uh, growing up, dad would spray this terrible stuff that was so toxic. <laughs> but it's primer. So we're going to do a couple moves, which is a little breath work, like which Ariane talked about, breathing through your nose, and also just a short visualization meditation. This will only take two or three minutes, but uh, it's something that you can incorporate into your day. So close your eyes with me. We're going to raise our arms. Up. Actually, open them for a moment so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to bring your arms down into your ribs with the breath out your nose. So it goes like this. And we're just going to do 30 of those, okay? So join me, arms up, <laughs> eyes closed. You're sort of hitting your rib cage a bit. Your, sh your shoulders might get a little bit sore in and out your nose. <laughs> okay, rest with your hands on your laps. You can put your palms up if you want to. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Allow yourself to smile just a little bit, just a little bit, even if your circumstances are squirrely. Round two, let's get our arms up. Let's go again. Okay, rest with your hands on your lap. You can lift them up onto your palms up if you like. Just your palms up. Close your eyes. Breathe normally. 
Now I want you to think of something you're grateful for. We're going to prime your mind to focus on something here. So find an image of something you're grateful for. It could be anything. A smile from your love or your child or a good meal you had. Just find something you're grateful for. Allow that image to become brighter. Let a little smile come to your face let it go. Now pick another one really quick, like a Rolodex. This is almost like a muscle. Pick another thing you're grateful for. It could be anything. It could be that you have 10 toes and allow that to fill your body with the feeling of being grateful. Now choose one more, one more thing you're grateful for and feel what it feels like to be fully grateful for that thing. That person that you can speak, that you can hear my voice right now. And let it go. Now I want you to take, I want you to take another deep breath with me here. And I want you to imagine a blue light or white light, you can make it whatever color you want, coming down all the way from above the clouds, the stars in the universe, bring it right down through the top of your head, through the, past the sun, past our clouds, past the roof of your house, into your top of your head. Move that blue light all the way through your body, go down your, in your brain, in your throat, in your, in your chest, all the way down your abdomen, your roots, down your legs, your calves, your ankles all the way into the earth, send that all the way through the earth to the other side, past the clouds, the stars, and again out to the universe. Now take that back, breathe in, to your feet, let it come up to your ankles, knees, hips, tummy, right to your heart, your throat, your brain, top of your head, your house, the clouds and the stars and now back into the sky. Okay. Take another deep breath. Let it go. Now I just want you to take that feeling of love that's in your heart right now and just send it to somebody, one person that might need it. Just send that, could be to somebody, especially in your country, you're, there will be many. Just take that feeling of fullness and love and send it towards somebody that needs a little of your love and your light today, yeah? Take a deep breath. And I want you to find one goal, one vision in the future that, that you are meaning to accomplish, whether it's a book you're publishing, whether it's funding for your, non, your, your nonprofit or funding for your company. And I want you to visualize that being finished, complete. But get into the feeling of that goal being complete. And stand in what it feels like in your body, like you did it, it's done. You finished that book, you finished that album, you, you raised that money, you completed that goal. And it, what does that feel like? Take a deep breath. Feel that feeling, what it feels like. You did it. It's complete. Feel that. Take a deep breath. Let it go and just shake a little bit. Great. And you can open your eyes. So you're like, why is this guy doing this? That he's going to sing to us or tell us some stories. But here's one of the gifts. And I know, I know that Ariane touched on it. Before we get into this, it's so important that we can actually train our minds like you can prime your your body and you can prime your thoughts to focus on things that you want rather on things that you don't want and quite often just the way we are with the news media it's we're bombarded with fear and we're we're primed with fear constantly like that is that is what is is sold to us and then they sell us anti-anxiety medication on those news channels what meditation does is it's, it's like it's a health revolution and you can train your mind like a muscle and have actual mental fitness and you, a fit mind can do a number of things. So a fit mind you can focus intently 
for extended periods of time. A fit mind can see situations clearly and can act rationally. A fit mind is present and is not lost in your thoughts. A fit mind can recover quickly from negative emotions. Uh, a fit mind is full of vitality and purpose. So one thing that meditation does, and you don't have to do it long, you could just carve out a little time every day to be with yourself. And, and so you're actually living your life. Otherwise, you're just living other people's lives and you're living in reaction to what other people are demanding of you constantly. So meditation can bring structure and function of your brain and your body, right? So it can actually bring structure and function to your brain and to your body. It improves your concentration. It, it, it helps with your working memory and, and your mood. Meditation also supports the health of your whole body, which is linked to your brain through your nervous system. So it also, this is a couple really interesting facts about meditation. It can improve your insulin resistance. It, it can improve your, your immune function, your pain tolerance. It can even treat some clinical disorders just with being present and by uh, becoming more conscious and aware with having a little pause to your day where you take it for you and spend that time. Um, it can actually re reverse cellular aging. So how much money would you pay for a drug that could do all that? And like Ariane said, it's free. Like this stuff doesn't cost money. It's available with just a little bit of consistent practice. And you, it's, so wouldn't you spend like millions of dollars for a drug like that? One of the best side effects of meditation is it trains your ability to stay present. And, in, in, you know, none of us can imagine what you're going through in Ukraine. Um, and, and so to be able to have a fit mind to, to go, okay, what's in my control? And this is one of my favorite stoic um, philosophies is you can only control what's here, what's, what's in your control. And often when we feel stressed or we have symptoms of anxiety or symptoms of depression, we're trying to control things that are outside of the realm of reality that we can control. So for me as an actor, I can train my voice, I can train my, my body, I can read my scripts, I can work on, I can eat really great food, I can get good sleep. Those are things in my control. And that's your job as an entrepreneur, especially what Ariane was sharing about with being healthy. Those, are, those things are in your control. What's not in your control and what's not in my control is if somebody likes my performance, likes me, likes the, if my movie does well in the theaters or on TV, none of that's in my control. So the Stoics believe that if you put all of your attention onto what you can control and, and, uh, and that then, and don't waste all your energy on all those things that you can't control, then your quality of your life and those things that you can control, you can actually nurture them and have those grow. So meditation is a really powerful way to, to discern the wisdom of the things that you can control and the things you can't control. Because when you're living in your head constantly, how many on here have sometimes live in their head where they're just in their thoughts, right? Constantly, yeah, you can raise your hand. So most people are. A Harvard study said that 47% of, of humans' days is spent lost in thought. And many of those thoughts are negative. So meditation is just such a great little gift that you can give yourself. and. And it takes some practice and it just consistency. But like Ariane said, schedule it. Actually put it in your schedule. Uh, and the gift you will give yourself is have this richness of, of actually living your life as for the moment, not just as a means to an end. And you will be able to discern if you're in the right job, if you're in the right relationship, because you'll have slowed down enough to actually be heart-centered not just because the head is tricky, man. The head is, it will lie to you over and over again. So I have a song called uh, Open My Heart. Uh, I'm gonna play for you. Um, 
But just before I do that, I want to share this really cool thing. Um, just raise your hand if you're with me here. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me just put you back on my screen. Ra raise your hand. Yeah? Both hands up. Let me see both hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for being generous uh, and actually having your camera on. It makes a difference. It's, it tr turns you from being a, an observer, spectator, to being somebody who's playing the game. And if you're playing the game, the game is fun. If you're watching it, yeah, you can get bored and get on your phone or like, I'm asking for your attention just for this, you know, 45 more minutes. And I promise you, I will deliver as much value as I can. Uh, just from, you know, th some of the experience I've had uh, in dealing with rejection, we're gonna get to that in just a moment. Uh, music is my medicine, so music is something that I grew up with and it connects me to God, it connects me to my body, and it connects the vibration of it, just brings healing to me. And I, over the pandemic, I actually started doing live streams and I really fell in love with, with performing and I, I have a schedule where I perform three times a week. So thank you for being here and thank you for being generous and listening gener I can feel the way you're listening because I, I, your listening is actually pulling, if I'm present to it, and I listen, I'm gonna be able to share just what you need to hear. And it's actually your listening that allows me to think and speak clearly. So how many of you are, know what it's like to be around somebody who just doesn't listen to you, or they listen to you like, your past or your failures or that you're not funny and when you're around that person you just feel awful but then you might have that person when they listen to you they're listening for your greatness and they laugh at all your jokes and around that person you feel like a million bucks so I just want to thank you you're listening I can feel it I can feel that you're listening for my greatness you're not listening for me to fail and because there's an ease in the way I'm speaking and so that's because of you so thank you so make sure you listen to people for their greatness not just uh, not their past or not not what they did before or like yeah there's a way there's a really powerful way for people then they can show up then folks can show up and feel great around you because you're expecting them to right so Ariane called me a while ago, uh, now 10 years ago, and said, hey, Paul, do you want to come to India with me? Uh, because one of the riders on this trip from North India over the Himalayas to the Tibetan Plateau, one of the riders dropped out. And I grew up riding motorcycles, but I'd never been to India. And Ariane's always got adventures on, on tap. And so I said yes, and I brought my camera, and on this journey, on this journey, we, we rode motorcycles for about a month, a little less than a month, and got to visit a bunch of temples along the way. And in my helmet, on the roads in India, like driving in most cities is challenging. Driving in India is like going the wrong way against traffic at rush hour at high speed. Like it is, it is, a, mental, it is a mental workout. And the first week or so, in my mind, I had images of my body being mangled like dying like being hit by a truck like and i was in the helmet from eight to twelve hours a day some days six or seven hours but some days up to 10 hours 11 hours i think one day we were 12 hours in my thoughts right and what i loved about it was i got present to the automatic repeating fear conversation that was was in the background Life's so busy, I didn't even know I was having those thoughts until I got quiet enough in the motorcycle helmet to be cruising around India going, oh, the thought that's looping. And you know, of course, some of, most of you are in Ukraine where there's probably that feeling constantly of fear. And I cannot even begin to speak to what you're going through and to that level. What I was going through in my head is, is, is very small compared to what you're going to. So I'm going to offer this just as a, as a, and lightly say from my perspective, because I'm not in your perspective. And, and my fear of death was still very real. 
and and three de and very high definition in my imagination that I was going to get hit by a vehicle, and who's going to come to India to take care of me? And hopefully I died. Hopefully I wasn't just going to be maimed for life. That was my looping thought. And I'm a very positive guy. Like I don't have a lot of negative thoughts. But in India, on a motorcycle, I some reason I did. The the background came to the foreground. And on that, I remember one of the talks our, our teacher, Anand, shared with us that, that how fear makes you dumb and the vibration of fear makes you stiff and rigid. And when I was fearful, I rode my motorcycle very stiff and very rigid and not very intuitively. And so about day 10, this, the thoughts were getting a little bit more quiet now because I'm like, oh, there's that thought again. Well, there it is again. And just on repeat, the same thoughts over and over again. I put a photograph of my son at the time, who was uh, not, then he was four years old, on my gas tank of my bike. So I had an image of love in front of me. And so when a thought of fear would come up, I would just look at my son and my body would relax. And I started to make this connection that, okay, fear makes me dumb. Love makes me smart and intuitive. And love makes me uh, like much, a much more of a safe driver for sure. And fear makes me rigid, stiff, and very dangerous to myself. So that entire journey for me was from fear to love. And I know fear is all around you there. And so throughout the day, I would encourage you to find images or music or things that can view you into that vibration of love so you make decisions that are intuitive and, and smart. Because fear, we make very quick decisions when we're afraid and not always the best decision. Fear serves a purpose, but fear runs rampant in your mind. It can, it can, it can create quite a bit of chaos and, and move you out of your heart and into your head. And so I'm going to sing a song. Um, so I'm really grateful that Ariane invited me on that trip. And I use that, that image of, and the feeling of moving when I feel stiff in my body and I feel afraid, I'm like, oh, I'm in my head and I'm afraid. And I'm like, well, how can I move to a vibration of love? And, and that vibration of love, Sometimes it means turning the news off for a minute, and I know it's a lot more difficult where you are. Turning off all the noise and feed, the, and feed yourself and nurture yourself with some images and some music that is more of the love vibration. Yeah? All right, this is a song I wrote, actually, a version of this a long, long time ago. Now that I'm done speaking, I have to turn it down a bit. All right. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah? Good. This song is called Open My Heart. hide behind my guitar I always hide behind my smile I need to hide with you for a while I need to hide Things 
arms are different when you are around. I need to run to you for a while. I need to run with you. My heart keeps beating if I keep dreaming. 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 My heart keeps beating if I. If I keep dreaming, my heart oh, keeps beating. Oh, keeps dreaming, my heart keeps beating. Keeps dreaming, my heart keeps beating. My heart keeps dreaming, my heart keeps beating. Sing with me if you want to. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Sometimes we have to be reminded, right, to open when we feel like closing. So I honestly, and this is probably from Ariane too, as so many of these little wisdom nuggets that I carry with me uh, through life, but it's one of the gifts and the challenges and I feel you could sum up spiritual health with this. If you open your heart when you feel like closing. So it's a choice though. It's not an easy thing to do. It's just anybody can close their heart when they're being attacked, right? Or when they're being let down or disappointed or being made fun of. But I want to introduce you to another possibility, which is to open when it feels, when everything around you is saying protect, shut down, close, hide, protect. And that's very real for a lot of you. Very, very real. So I'm not saying it's easy. 
I'm not saying it's even practical, but I wanted to offer it to you as a tool that when you feel your heart shutting and becoming rigid and, and, and tight and, and steel-like, pessimistic, angry, resentful, that in that moment, use that as your cue to be like, oh, okay. So I know where that path is going to take me. It's like the pill in the matrix, right? You know where that road goes. So why not try something <clears throat> that's crazy? And especially some of you maybe have been hurt in love. And it's hard to open in love once your heart's been hurt. But if you keep closing, you will just get the same result over and over again. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to, to, to dream with me. And when you feel like closing, open just a little bit, like, and then see how that feels. And it's going to feel weird and vulnerable. But one way you could do it is just write a little note and put on your mirror that's just like open my heart or open when I feel like closing. And you could take a lot of things that Ariane said last week and put those on your mirror. Because if, if you don't schedule something or write something down, it's just going to go here. And then as soon as you get off this call with me, you'll get emails or you'll read the news. And then everything I've said to you is gone, like mostly because your subconscious is, is, got, is going, is moving, right? And so you're hearing me with your conscious mind. So unless you take this, these things or something that you're learning from Ariane or from any of these teachers along the way or anything I've had to offer, find a way to take it and make it real. So write it down or put it on your mirror or something, right? Um, otherwise, it'll just scoot right out the back door. So put something somewhere open when you feel like closing. Uh, <laughs> now let's get to the rejection is the art of rejection. <clears throat> A lot of you are entrepreneurs and you're trying to raise money and you're going to be rejected a lot. You're going to be said, mm, like you're going to hear the word no a lot. I'm not sure any of you will have heard no 750 times, which is, which is how, this is how many times I've heard it. So I have this statistic. Uh, my manager gave us me years ago that I had been on 650 auditions, but that was five years ago. So it's probably closer to... 800 auditions now and 750 no's like 750 times somebody said you're not right for this like no <laughs> but each one of those auditions i had spent several hours preparing sometimes driving an hour each way in traffic sometimes reading the script which could be two hours sometimes paying 150 dollars for a coach to and sometimes and then and memorizing a bunch of pages and then sometimes driving all the way to Hollywood or wherever, going into an audition and then giving you a minute or two minutes and then you go home. So of those 800 auditions, which is probably more realistic now with all the self tapes and everything that's been going on, uh, that's probably more realistic as to my number. And one of the things I just I remember a while back. <clears throat> so you will face rejection as an entrepreneur. And as a lover, as an artist, I'm sure we have artists on here too. And it is just like change is a muscle, which Ariane talks about in her book. She has, she has a really great book on change. Just like change is a muscle, so is the art of rejection. And it's just, it's just creating the superpower of reframing something. Reframing something as bad into turning it into something that's like, okay, thank you for the, the lesson. And I would not be the actor that I am had I not prepared 800 auditions. And, and dealing with the rejection, I learned really quick that it's not about me, it's about my height or my <clears throat> skin color or it's just so, so the, the producer could have had an ex-boyfriend that looked like me and like it's not, very little of it was, and that's where that stoic approach to just doing your best with the things that are, that you can actually control. Otherwise you go mad.
trying to control things like, will people like me? Will people like my pitch deck? Will people like my acting or my movie or my song or my voice? Like, you want to talk about vulnerability is singing. You're where you're out there, you're, you know, people, people, especially online, I sing online all the time and I get comments all the time. That's like, don't quit your day job. <laughs> and so like, do I, do I let that shut me down or thank God I have some tools to anchor and be like, okay, that's just their perspective. That's their opinion. They're probably were spoken to really aggressively or violently as a child. It's okay. And maybe they're right. Maybe I should just keep training, which I do, which is in the realm of my control. I have five hours of acting school uh, weekly online, and I have two separate singing online every week, singing lessons with a coach uh, to, to continue to nurture what's actually in my control, right? So the art of rejection is like what Ariane spoke about too, is realizing having your life be less focused on you and being focused on service. Like how, how can I serve? Even if they rejected me, maybe I find some things that that company is doing wrong and I send them free an email and be like, I did some research, you know that you're marketing in this area, you know, you're marketing to a wrong demographic. I just did some research and you keep adding value. You stop making it about you. You're like, okay, how can I be of service then? A Seth Gooden thing, one of the guys who started CD Baby, he did that. Just, just kept adding value to all these companies around the world and eventually he made himself a consultant because he, he added so much value to these companies that eventually they're like, well, we actually need to hire you because he added so much value. So dealing with rejection and the art of rejection is taking and it's such a relief, you guys and ladies, when you do this, taking all that pressure off of yourself and going, what need can I fill? Like, how can I be of service with the gifts and the talents that I've cultivated and that I've been given? And how do I have my life make a difference? And that there's so much joy in that. There's so much joy and energy like Ariane was talking about. You will actually be somebody who's filled with energy because that's just the way we're made. We're not made to be self-focused and narcissistic. We're meant, we're designed to be in community. And the communities, you know, that have the tightest communities, the ones that live the longest are, uh, the, in, in the longevity, all the blue zones, those communities are super tight. You could focus that they eat a lot of vegetables or their, their water's pure or they have a ton of minerals, but the number one thing that creates longevity and that, that has these blue zones is their tight-knit community. Something to live for that's greater than yourself. And having something to live for that's greater than yourself will give you a reason to wake up in the morning and have energy. We're not designed to look inward in that way and like, and to have our lives be of service creates a great deal of momentum. And as, as vibration and like energy attracts like energy, you will then start attracting other people that will be of service to you because that's kind of how it works. One thing I've discovered is that, you know, th the way things vibrate actually matter. Like if you're super funky, you're, and, and, and negative, you're gonna look, it won't take long for you'll be surrounded by a bunch of folks who are focused on the negative and gossiping and slandering. And like Ariane said too, it's like the top five people you surround yourself will be your bank account, your health, your sex life, your self-confidence, the, 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 the people you spend like that circle. So it's very crucial to, to choose wisely your community. That, that you're spending time with and and really take take her easy with the news like and, and I know your lives depend on the news in a way and but maybe create some sort form of discipline 
that you're not just watching and believing everything that's piped to you through news because they have an agenda always and maybe just find a time that serves you where you're at your highest vibration to watch the news and watch it objectively uh, and um, so so that that's that's one of the most um, powerful things that I learned about rejection is so uh, Ariane also I'm sure it was Ariane introduced me to um, a tool that can help you really shift your vibration and your in your feeling which is called a Ho'oponopono and it's a Hawaiian healing technique that the tribal leaders in Hawaii would use uh, to solve disagreements between <laughs> warring tribes and it goes like this <clears throat> I love you I'm sorry please forgive me thank you and so sometimes before I go into an audition because the past tells me I've had eight you know 750 rejections I sometimes have to clean the stink out of the car with that phrase. I clean the room a bit before I go in there. Um, and it's sort of like a prayer. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. It, takes, it helps you take responsibility for your part. Uh, Joe Vitale is the author of a book called Zero Limits where he really explains the power of that simple prayer. And, and I use it all the time. If I'm about to send an email that's got some weight to it I'm like okay I love you I'm sorry please forgive me thank you I'm gonna send this email and I'm gonna trust that it's gonna be received with the intention my purest intention not subject to the, my past and it's it's a really powerful tool for dealing with rejection because that's all in the past and we spend so much time in the past and in the future and how many know that when you spend too much time in the past there's a lot of depression there when you spend too much time in the future there's a lot of anxiety there so if you're having symptoms of depression there's a good chance you're spending a lot of time in your head in the past and if you're if you're anxious there's a good chance you're spending some time in the future and that's where meditation comes in and I'm begging you to create with your schedule five minutes 11 minutes a day or twice a day to just sit with yourself and get to know yourself a little bit yeah so is there an art to rejection yeah just keep doing it like do it fast and do it often like go for it and, and fail big, like go, go do big, weird things. Like go do things that everybody else is afraid to do because if you miss, you're gonna wind up way up here. So go massive, like go ridiculously big with your dreams and your, and your aspirations because if you miss, you're gonna wind up on a whole other floor in the building, right? You shoot for the roof, you're gonna end up somewhere towards the top, but so, I guarantee you, everybody on here is dreaming too small. You're capable of so much incredible magic and that is so much bigger than your past. And the story that you've made up that the past is about you or the identity that you've invented to survive something that happened to you in the past. And I just wanted to offer you this incredible opportunity to, to create and to dream from the present moment. Not trying to fix or survive or change something from the past, but to actually create something beautiful and original and artistic with this short life you have between the time you're born and the time that, that you, know, you leave this rock. So... There's this short little dash on our tombstone, like what you do with that dash. Well, you might as well make it fun. Like you might as well, like you can, there's, there, there, you might as well do your best to enjoy the, the moments that you're given because even, and this is a bold statement, because in, in the situation you're in in Ukraine right now, there is 
possibly people in a worse situation that are choosing to find enjoyment and joy and pleasure even in a totally brutal situation. And it's a choice. And, and, and I know that this, like, it probably doesn't feel like a choice because when there's a bully, we feel like we're a victim. And you could get everybody around you to agree that you were a victim. Take, uh, I have a story from my past where I was done wrong to. And if I wanted to, I, everybody I tell the story to, they're like, yep, that guy's a total putz, a total jerk. They say other words. And you're the victim. How could you ever be that guy's friend again? And I'm like, well, if I don't forgive him, the feeling in my body is horrific. And if I live my life as a victim, the, then the energy, the feeling I have is almost sickness. So I had to find a way to forgive this person twice for a very similar thing. And so <laughs> this is a song, I wasn't gonna sing it, but I'm gonna sing the song. It's called, Let It Go. And it's a choice that I had to make. It's a choice I had to make to forgive and to let it go because the other option was torment in my mind and a definite result of me repeating the relationship issues that I was responsible for and attracting that. Uh, I can't go into details of the situation, but let's just put it this way. It was a betrayal at a very high level. And at least from my perspective, a betrayal at a very high level. And, uh, and I had a choice to eventually give up the identity that I was done wrong to and create something a little bit more powerful, which is just taking responsible for my part. And at least there was some power there. And like I said, I could have re recruited the whole world to believe me that I was a victim. This song is called Let It Go. been a while since I've seen your face Well it's taken me some time to find my place Had some troubles trust in love I was waiting for help from above From time to time our story went around I left out the parts that would burn the whole house down Just when life was starting to make sense We tore down the wall We built a fence Let it go, 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 go Freedom for your soul Let it go, go, go Everything you own, let it go, go, go. Just when I thought I was on the other side, I had to go another round with my pride. 
can forgive you again I've some ideas where you've been The wounds you give me are the ones that heal me When the shame is gone done this till my dying days but now I know I can set you free I can let it go I can let it be oh let it go 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 sing with me freedom for your soul let it go 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 Thank you so much that is a uh, that is uh, let it go not to be confused from the movie frozen <laughs> I do have music out there if you want to check it out it's on my website paulgreen.com both my albums are there and some other goodies uh, feel free to check that out in my uh, um, but yeah that song let me look at the time here. Where are we? Woo! Oh man, I have like time for one more song and then some questions. Holy smurf. What happened? That went fast. That went so fast. I'm really interested in taking from your, some of your questions. Let me see if I can't see the chat on here. Is there a chat? Oh, there we go. There's four in the chat. Oh, there's just, okay, good. Da, 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 da. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. So if you have, I'm not sure how we want to do questions. I think I'm going to play two more songs and then I'll take a couple questions before I, or one more song. We'll see. We'll see. I've been talking. It's time to play some music. Um, this is a song that I really enjoy and uh, um, I think you might too. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I have braces on like as a kid when I wear this thing. A little bit Bob Dylan and a little bit like I have a retainer on from braces. <laughs> Which way the wind blows 
When this day is done Breathe, breathe in the air And set your intentions Tomorrow's a new day for everyone A brand new moon and a brand new sun Follow, follow the sun Which way the wind blows this day is done Breathe Breathe in the air And set your intentions When you feel life's coming down on you like a heavy wave When you feel this crazy society is adding to the strain Take a stroll to the nearest waters and, and remember your place well, many moons have risen and fallen long, long before you came. So which way wind blowing? And what does your heart say? Yeah, which way is the wind blowing? And what does your heart say? Sing with me, follow. Which way the wind blows When this day is gone Breathe, come on Breathe, breathe in the air And set your intentions Dream with care Dream with care One more time, let's do it Sing with me, yeah? I hear you. <laughs> Which way the wind blows when this day is done? Breathe. Breathe. Breathe in the air and set your intention. Good singing, everybody. That's a song by Xavier Rudd that just like lights, lights things up like a Christmas tree, I find. Yeah? Good singing. You guys are great. I wish I could hear you, but it's a real mess when we try and do that. All right, I think I have time for one more song. I'm trying to think of what song it should be. Let me see. Let me see. I wrote down a few, and i got to pick the last one. I can't believe how fast time goes. I was going to do for you... A song called Freedom because a real quick story and about uh, having a and life, not a but life. So I went uh, 
uh, one of our teachers was teaching about, that was the topic of the conversation. And he said, give me some people who have butts. Like, I want a million dollars, but I want to sleep till noon, right? That's a butt life. I want a good relationship, but I want to watch porn all the time. I want to be in health and fit, but I also want to eat pizzas till midnight and watch Netflix, right? Those are buts. And I put my hand up and said, I want commitment, but I want freedom. And my partner was sitting right next to me. <laughs> and the teacher was like, you, should, you guys should really talk about this. And what started to happen was he, he worked with me a little bit. And then over the weeks, I started to look at my life and I was like, oh my gosh, the more I commit to my guitar, the more freedom I have, the more I commit to my body yoga, the more freedom I have, the more co I commit to my voice, the more freedom I have. But why in relationship to my partner did I think that commitment was confinement? chains, ball and chain, like, ugh, the end of my freedom if I committed to this relationship. So I just want you to look at your life for a minute and where are you using the word but? I want to do this startup, but I don't have the money, right? Even if you just changed it to and, I want to, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this company happen and I don't have the money, your brain knows that goes, I'm going to figure that out. As soon as you put butt in there, you butt all over yourself and it's over. So uh, this is a song called Freedom, and I'm going to end with this song. I'm going to challenge you to write on your mirror the word and, and then but, and cross the word but out, just to remind yourself, okay? Remind yourself, I want X, and I here's my situation, not I want X, but, right? So. I'm now eight years in that relationship and I committed to her and there was freedom this way in the relationship. Yeah, I took away my options of many partners or like adventures with different women, but the adventure was in my one woman. And the more I committed, the more freedom there was. The more I commit to God, the more freedom there is in that relationship. But in relationship to my woman, commitment was not freedom. <laughs> And it was, it didn't happen overnight, but I started to look that I had made up a story in my head that commitment was chains in relationship. Yeah. So this is a song called Freedom. And then I'm going to take your, I'm going to take your uh, questions for a few minutes before I go. I'm filming a Christmas movie uh, in Canada and, and I have to be on set pretty soon, but they let me do this talk with you today before I go film. And so... I, uh, I'm happy to be here with you. This is a song called Freedom. Um, and then what time will we got? 1.10. Then we'll be really short for questions, but we're going to try it. I'll, make, I'll try and do this song shorter than I usually do. All right. God, a man of the devil too, I often wind up doing the things that I know I shouldn't do, in an upside down world, war don't make much sense, I find myself with brothers now on both sides of the fence, all I want. If you raise his taxes, 
If you take away his guns, you take away his right to use, he's gonna shoot someone. He said, this is God's country, land of the free, and that peaceful, easy feeling, well, it isn't guaranteed. All he wants All he needs Is freedom This is a verse for the ladies. If you tell her she can't do that, if you tell her she ain't strong, well, she'll move the tallest mountains just to show you you were wrong. She was born on a motorbike. Well, she's got a lot of fight. Yeah, she's as tough as nails, ain't afraid to fail. She'll love you good and right. Well, all she wants, all she needs, sing with me, freedom. Get yourself some. <laughs> and so, before we take questions, I just want to leave you with this um, this beautiful quote that just me means a lot to me. And, you know, one of the things that Ariane's really helped me with is understanding the voice in my head. And one of my favorite verses from the Tao Te Ching is, is that to be, to, to be kind and gentle and loving towards yourself in your thoughts on purpose. And if there's no enemy within, then no enemy without can do you any harm. And so many of you and us, we're our, worst, we're our worst critic and our worst enemy in our heads. But if there's no enemy in here, then no enemy out there can do you any harm. So I just want to leave you with that and one of the tools to cultivating that nurturing, loving, gentle relationship with yourself is the stillness that comes and the gift of meditation. So thank you for your time. I'm happy to take a couple questions. I, I have to hop out of here at 1.28 Eastern time. So I have about 11 minutes. <laughs> thank you so much, Paul. That was incredible. And we have a lot of wishes and regards in our chats and a lot of people are saying thank you. And me too, thank you so much. So actually we have a few questions from the chat. The first one is, um, the person asked you to share your immediate approach when someone said no and say no to you because of something that is not dependable on you. So how do you react in the moment? 
when somebody says no, yeah, that you have to reframe it to almost sound like how. It's actually taking the word and, and reconstructing it. So someone says no, and you're just like, retrain your ears to go how then. Like, it's not a no. It, it's, it's that person might even be testing you to see how bad you want it, especially if it's a CEO or you're trying to get funding and they say no, and then you could say, okay, I understand you said no, but here's here's something else that I wanted just to present with you to you. But yeah, it takes it it's it's training a muscle of rejection and understanding, not taking it personally. <laughs> Somebody says no to me, you know, it's taken me years to to train it to be like, oh, that just means not yet or not right now. And then I sometimes ask myself, okay, if that door is surely closing then that means there is another opportunity that's open right there. But just to, to, it takes practice though, to not let the no shut you down. You have to, you have to be willing to hear no hundreds of times and just be like, oh, it's just a word. Okay, got it. Next, next, that's it. Okay, thank you. And actually the next question is just right now, uh, how to increase the rate of positive answers? if it's ever possible. Yeah. Once it's out of your, it, that's an area that's out of your control. Just focus on what you can control, which is your fitness, your health, your mental health, your, your, your family, nurturing the things you love. You can't really control the rate of positive answers. That's, you might be able to manipulate it a little bit, but that's something that's out of your control. Be somebody that they want to work with so badly that they have no option because they look at your life and you're, they're inspired by your life. They're going to give you a yes based because they're going to want to be around you. So just nurture, nurture the things that are in your control. That's not, that's not in your control. Okay. And also there was a question from Ariane. Uh, she asks, what's the most important skill uh, to teach kids and teens? Oh, wow. Yes, because I have a new child and I have a 19 year old to teach them what's the most important skill. Did, was it a skill? Was that the question? Skill? Yeah, she asked about skill. Skill. Yeah, skill. She literally said skill, yeah. life skill. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, to be honest, I've learned more from my kids than I could dare to think I could teach them, meaning. As long as I stay open, I, there's so much that I learn. Like, I mean, I guess a skill would be that to, to, to take, to, to make a lot of mistakes and to, to a skill of dealing with rejection, not taking it personally. Um, that's something I guess I could offer them was to, to show them by my example, they're only going to learn by what I do, not by what I say. So whatever skills I have, they're just going to learn it by watching me. They're not going to, this will do nothing nothing so this what that's why once again you can't control your kids but what's in your control is how you develop yourself and then your kids will watch you and they will be all right because you're take nurturing the things that you can which is you you can't you can't control the outcome of your children at all <laughs> yeah that's fair enough also another question is can no be a blessing? Yeah, of course, Yarek. You better believe it. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think he knows. He knows, but he definitely knows the answer to that. Uh, you know, I would say it could it could be a bigger blessing than a yes, because as you look back on your life, a lot of the things that are no's that you're like, thank God that that prayer was not answered because the journey that your life went on. So yeah, I would just like, that's why there's all the joy in the, in the juice in the present moment, because you know, if in this moment, whatever's happening is where all the power is. But if you look back at your life, you, you will probably see more of the no's being blessings than being actually a rejection. Those no's will be new, new tunnels or new doors that have opened. For sure. Yes, Yark. I think so. 
Thank you so much. Actually, we have five more minutes. So if anyone wants to say something, just please raise your hands. We have five minutes. Yeah, thank you to the chats. You can say thank you, you can send a reaction or raise your hand if you want to tell something. Yeah, people are sending thank you to the chat. You're welcome. It's so nice to meet you all. If you want to, uh, I, I share more about this on my website, like this sort of conversation or follow my social media as Paul Green official and put a little uh, Ukrainian flag in there in my comments so I know that you're from, uh, from, that, from there and that we met this way, that would be super cool. It's Paul Green with the E official pretty much everywhere and then paulgreen.com uh, and there's a, uh, and if you want my album, I can get you a free code to download my album. Just if you reach out um, and if you reach out to Zena or Ariane and you want my albums, I can offer you a free download code that you can have both my albums if you want. So, um, and my assistant Ruth is actually on here. So I'll connect Zena and Ruth. And then if you reach out to Zena, if you want my record, I'll send you some download links and, and so you can, you can have my record. I'd love to offer you that. And I just, thanks for having me. I'm going to go get ready for my, my uh, day. Uh, and thank you for so much for having me. Thank you so much for it. Thank you. That was incredible. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Ari. Thank you, Ariane. You're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome, Inna. Thanks, Ariane, for inviting me. Make sure you listen to Ariane's talk again. There was so much gold in there. And if you haven't heard it, or if you haven't put it into your actions yet, what she shared with you is decades of learning. And I listened to it and it reminded me of some things. So you, it's such a gift for you guys to know Ariane. She is the portal to so much beautiful love and wisdom. So I'm, I'm very honored to be here with you guys. So thanks, God bless. Thank you. The recording to Ariane's session is on our YouTube channel and the link is in the Slack group. So guys, if you have any questions, you can send them there and we will answer. And also this recording will be there as well. Thank you so much for coming. Have a good evening.